Today, if possible, I would like to hear from Mr. Edgar Casey. I'm not sure if he can come, but I would like to try. In modern times, there has been a significant increase in mortality rates due to diseases such as cancer and hypertension. Also, with the recent decrease in temperatures, I would like to ask about various aspects. Now, Mr. Edgar Casey, if possible, I would like to hear your words regarding health and health management for us in modern times. If you would be so kind as to come to us, we would greatly appreciate it. Thank you very much. Could you please provide some words of wisdom regarding health management for us in modern times? Thank you very much. Generally speaking, regarding health management, I would like to say that issues within the mind manifest in the body. So, when various changes occur on the surface or within the body, people tend to perceive them as illnesses. However, these are the results of manifestation, and when it comes to the actual cause of the illness, it's largely spiritual. Therefore, rather than addressing the surface manifestation of illness, it's essential to deal with the spiritual issues within the mind. Even if the illness can be temporarily suppressed, similar symptoms may reappear later or manifest in other areas. In most cases, illnesses occur through such mechanisms. Therefore, regarding individual illnesses or symptoms, it may be necessary to examine each person individually to understand the underlying causes. However, speaking generally, this tends to apply to the majority of cases. Would you like me to provide some specific examples? Yes, for example, if you could explain how issues might manifest in the heart or the stomach, that would be helpful. I imagine there are different considerations depending on the affected area. Thank you very much. Well, I don't think we can say that's always the case, but for instance, when it comes to heart disease or arrhythmia, it's often associated with doubts or insecurities about one's own survival or feelings of weakness. These emotions, akin to inferiority complexes, can manifest in the body as heart disease. Essentially, toxins tend to accumulate in the weaker parts of the body, leading to symptoms. Depending on one's mindset and concerns, certain organs may be more prone to manifestation. So, for the heart, it's typically associated with fundamental issues surrounding survival, doubt, distrust, or anxiety about one's existence, self-deprecation, and so on. Similarly, with the liver or stomach, which are part of the digestive or detoxification systems, individuals who find it challenging to accept things or have strong opinions often struggle to digest and discern what's necessary or unnecessary, which can lead to issues like ulcers or liver damage. Those who resist understanding and acceptance may be prone to such conditions. Correcting these mindsets can help alleviate symptoms. Moving on to the intestines, including the large and small intestines, they're responsible for absorbing nutrients and eliminating waste. However, similar tendencies apply here too. What one takes in and what one discards mentally reflects on the intestines. When overwhelmed by external information or unable to discern harmful information, especially in the small intestine, where there are delicate villi responsible for nutrient absorption, damage to the mucous membrane can occur, hindering toxin expulsion. This can lead to toxins circulating throughout the body via the bloodstream and lymphatic system, causing various symptoms such as strokes or varicose veins. Hence, if the intestinal function isn't optimal, toxins might circulate, impacting various bodily functions. Therefore, it's crucial to be mindful of these processes to prevent widespread illness. This is a general overview, but I think that's the gist of it. Thank you. There are certainly aspects to be mindful of regarding various diets. When it comes to modern diets, overeating is surprisingly common. Could you please provide some guidelines and advice on this matter? Thank you. Food is what builds the body, so paying close attention to what we eat is crucial. Generally, nutrients such as proteins, minerals, vitamins, and enzymes are essential for our bodies. But surprisingly, we need to be cautious about certain aspects. 
For instance, vegetables contain toxins produced by the plants themselves to protect against pests. This is particularly noticeable in summer vegetables, where toxins accumulate in the skin to ward off pests. Consuming these toxins inadvertently may pose risks, so it's advisable to remove the outer skin of vegetables before cooking or even avoid them altogether. When it comes to protein, which is necessary for building bodily tissues, fish and chicken are recommended sources. Moving on to grains, traditionally some people have favored rice, although there's been a shift towards bread lately. With rice and wheat-based products, it's important to be mindful. Finely processed grains may not be ideal for our bodies, so it's better to consume them in their whole form whenever possible. Processing grains removes essential nutrients and alters their composition, so caution is warranted. Regarding rice, the bran portion contains valuable nutrients. Therefore, it's advisable not to rinse rice excessively before cooking to retain these nutrients. While there are various alcoholic beverages available nowadays, such as sake and beer, could you provide some guidance on how to consume alcohol and its effects on the body? Regarding alcohol, I recommend moderate drinking. This doesn't mean you shouldn't drink at all, of course, but rather that it's okay in moderation. Drinking excessively is certainly not advisable. Excessive alcohol consumption should be avoided. However, the human body does require some alcohol and fats to some extent. In this sense, it's important to aim for moderation. Ideally, about one glass would suffice, although this may vary depending on individual factors such as alcohol metabolism. It's all about moderation. I understand. It's all about moderation. Yes, thank you. Continuing on, as we age, it becomes increasingly difficult to raise the body temperature, and when it gets cold, the whole body tends to feel chilly. Could you please provide some advice on body temperature management, including bathing practices? Feeling cold and experiencing a chill often indicates poor blood flow in the extremities. This results in cold hands and feet due to weakened cardiac function or lower limb weakness, such as in the calves, affecting blood circulation. This leads to conditions like cold sensitivity. Particularly in women, muscle weakness may exacerbate this issue, as the legs, often referred to as the second heart, have a weaker ability to return blood flow. Consequently, many people suffer from chronic cold hands and feet. Engaging in regular exercise, such as walking, to strengthen leg muscles can be beneficial, ensuring the pump mechanism functions properly. Regarding bathing practices, it's important to note that while the surface temperature of the body increases with hot baths, the core temperature, where the internal organs are, remains unchanged. Soaking in excessively hot water for a short period may warm the surface but doesn't heat the core. Thus, it's recommended to soak in lukewarm water for at least 15 minutes to gradually warm the body from within. While many people are accustomed to this practice, it's essential for overall warmth. Immersing in overly hot water may give a false sense of warmth, as the core remains cold. Therefore, soaking in comfortably warm water for 15 to 20 minutes is ideal. This promotes internal warming, stimulates cell activity, improves blood circulation, and alleviates issues like shoulder stiffness caused by poor circulation and stagnant, thickened blood. Allowing ample time for a relaxing soak is crucial for effectively promoting blood flow. Thank you very much. It seems like various illnesses may arise if the body's internal temperature drops. Indeed, in the past, our grandparents often wore short-sleeved shirts with belly wraps which seems logical now. Keeping the abdomen warm prevents cooling of the internal organs, which serves a purpose. Recently, thin belly wraps have become popular, indicating that belly wraps may indeed contribute to health management. I'm paying more attention to it now. Thank you for all your insights. I apologize for asking so many questions but could you provide a final word of advice for modern-day people regarding their health? When it comes to food, 
There are various offerings that pursue a fast food-like taste, but it's important to thoroughly research the use of food additives. It's important to pay attention to what is used in those ingredients and what additives are included. This concept is often referred to as medicine and food being of the same origin. If we consider that what we eat builds our bodies and forms the basis of our health, then neglecting our meals and opting for simple options may not be ideal. It's crucial to carefully consider what we consume in terms of nutrients. Additionally, moderate exercise and sleep are also important. Lack of sufficient sleep can harm health, so it's crucial to prioritize it. Moreover, the timing of sleep is important, as there are specific periods when the body heals and generates new cells, typically between 10 p.m. to around 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. These are considered crucial hours for rest and bodily stagnant. These are basic but essential factors, so it's important not to neglect them. Therefore, I urge you not to overlook these aspects. I tend to stay up quite late, but rather than that, it's better to go to bed a bit earlier at night and wake up early in the morning. Is it advisable to do something in the morning hours, waking up around 5 o'clock? Thank you very much for everything. I aim to manage my health well and live a long life, contributing to building a wonderful country. Yes, thank you very much for today. How did you feel after watching the video? Edgar shared many tips for maintaining health. For all you conscious viewers who have watched this video to the end, you may have heard these things somewhere before. Nonetheless, I think it's important to consciously consider them again. Personally, I want to be particularly conscious of consuming whole foods, soaking in the bath for 15 minutes, and not over-rinsing rice. What would you like to be more conscious of in the future? It might be good to discuss with family and friends. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. Please stay tuned for the next video.